Melanoma is a form of skin cancer and is the most deadly type of skin cancer somebody can get. Now, people with fair skin are more at risk for skin cancer than people that have darker skin, but anybody really can get it. In fact, it's actually more deadly in people with darker skin because it's harder to detect. Now, there are other forms of skin cancer as well, but not nearly as deadly as melanoma because they don't usually spread to other organs and not nearly as fast. However, if left untreated, they could definitely spread, cause all types of damage, and even death. Now, there's really three kinds of melanoma. The first and by far the most common type is known as cutaneous melanoma, and that's when it affects the skin. The second type is when it affects the mucous membrane of the body, and this involves the throat, nose area, mouth, and even the anus, which is somewhat gross and kind of scary. And the last type is known as ocular melanoma, and can you guess where this occurs? Well, if you still haven't figured it out yet, I'll give you a hint. If you look closely, you can figure it out. I might have threw you off there. <laughs> well, anyways, ocular melanoma is when it affects the eyes. It has nothing to do with this chart here. <laughs> uh, the good news is that with skin cancer, the science community really has a great idea what causes it, unlike a lot of other forms of cancer. And knowing what causes it can help really kind of help make it easier to somewhat prevent. Now, you already know that too much UV radiation causes this disease, but did you know that tanning beds can really increase your risk of skin cancer? Also, this chart here, this really kind of shows you the difference between melanoma on the very bottom and, of course, up top, other forms of skin cancer and how they compare and what they look like. So they're both bad. Now, according to the International Journal of Cancer, Journal of cancer people who have used a tanning bed have a 15% higher risk of getting melanoma. What's worse is that people that first use a tanning bed before the age of 35 raise their chance of getting this cancer by 75%. Dang, that's not good. Heck, I, use, I, I actually used to use tanning beds, so I don't anymore. So in a nutshell, don't use them. Another major risk would be exposing your skin to sunlight for extended periods of time like this uh, large gentleman here in this picture is doing. Now, I myself, I love getting outdoors, and sometimes I surf in the ocean on occasion, um, but I always force myself to constantly reapply sunscreen, which helps. Another risk factor includes not using sunscreen when outdoors, so just kind of remember to put that on. And having a sunburn increases the risk as well as a suntan. In fact, the truth is a suntan is really just damaged skin scales. It looks good, but it's not the best thing for you. Now you might be wondering how someone knows that they have melanoma cancer. How could you detect this thing so you can get rid of it? Well, there really are two types of melanoma cancer. And that's is a change to an existing mole or birthmark on your body or a brand new birthmark that just suddenly pops up and appears. All right, so the cancer can be detected by noticing any change to the size, shape, or color of existing mole or birthmark. Let's go over that first. Now, the medical community recommends using the ABC rule, or ABCD, yeah, E rule, as you can see from this picture here. The A stands for asymmetry, when one half isn't the same as the other half. As you noticed, one half is a little bit bigger than the other one. That's one way you can tell that it's melanoma from a birthmark. The second one is B, which stands for border. That's when the edges are blurred or reggy and they're not even. So that's another sign. C is color. That's when there's some strange colors in there. Maybe a little bit of blue, maybe a little bit of purple, some green, some pink. Who knows? D, on the, on the right there, stands for a diameter. That's when it's very big, like, a, like almost like a pencil eraser. It's just a big birthmark. And E, the last one, it says evolution, when it grows and expands, it starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Also, of course, there's a new birthmark, our mole, that appears on your skin, and it looks a little different than the other ones, kind of like the ugly duckling. That could be a warning sign. Now, if this cancer has been growing for a while, it could bring about some other symptoms, like bleeding and some itching or pain sensations in the region where it's located. 
Now the surrounding skin could be red and all swollen due to the body trying to heal the area, as well as the thickening underneath the skin. As the cancer spreads, it could bring about additional symptoms. If it gets in the lungs, it could bring about chest pains, irregular breathing, an ongoing cough, and even blue-looking skin around the mouth. Now, other symptoms of advanced skin cancer would be like diarrhea, constipation, fatigue, some unexplained weight loss, some headaches, and even possibly some seizures. So to pre prevent this horrible disease, the best thing you do is avoid going down the sun, especially during the hottest times of the year and day. Of course, that's uh, kind of unrealistic, but if you do go out, I'm sure you're putting a lot of sunblock on, and remember to reapply it when it lasts for so long. Now, the type of sunblock you should be using is a broad spectrum one with an SPF of at least 15, if not more. The next great, great thing you do is this is self examination yourself. I mean, get to know your skin, get to know your body, you know, look at all the moles you have. If more people started doing this, uh, they, the, the, the amount of people dying from skin cancer would be reduced a lot. Oh, and of course, if you have a loved one, they can definitely help you out with this. Now, remember all the symptoms I shared with you earlier. And if you're concerned about a skin mark or something that's a little unusual, just go see a dermatologist. Also, there really are no rules to cancer, so it could be different than the ABCs of determining. And the only way to really know is obviously go see a specialist. In fact, a specialist. In a study done by Emory University School of Medicine, they found that people who saw a dermatologist were much more likely to survive this type of cancer than people who just saw an average doctor about it, probably because they know what to look for. Next, you could, of course, take a multivitamin. Sounds a little odd, but there are a few vitamins like folic acid that has to do with cells and how they replicate themselves. It's all about cell health. The fact is, skin cells are constantly dying and replicating themselves. And in fact, each day we lose around a million skin cells. The other major benefit is that they have a lot of antioxidants. In laboratory animal studies, the presence of higher levels of antioxidants have been shown to prevent free radical damage to cells that are connected to cancer. This also means that anything that has antioxidants can help prevent skin cancer, even coffee, which is great awesome news for me because um, I love coffee. I drink it all the time. According to the National Cancer Institute, each cup of caffeinated coffee that you drink daily, there's a 5% drop in your odds of developing non-melanoma skin cancer later in life. So that's still good. It's not melanoma, but you know it's really great. Of course, this study is a little bit strange because I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, if, so, if you drank 20 cups of coffee, does that mean you have like zero risk of getting skin cancer? But anyways, the important thing is that it helps. That's all that really matters. Now next up is omega-3 supplements that are like insanely really great healthy. According to the University of Manchester, taking fish oil boosted skin immunity to sunlight. It also protected against elements that weaken the immune system, allow that, that cancer to grow. All this helps resist someone with skin cancer. Of course, drinking green tea helps prevent it as well as anything that helps the immune system, like I throw some ideas out there, different various herbs would be like olive leaf extract, and black cumin seeds. There's tons and tons of herbs out there that can help. Now, if you're interested in dietary supplements and how they could provide benefits to your health, I highly recommend you view a free report I created all about shopping for these products and buying supplements. The fact that there's just tons of these products and some of them can not only be overpriced, but they can harm your health. This report can help someone identify a good brand over a brand that's well, it's a lot more risky. It also goes over what to take for fitness, uh, what to take to help with certain health problems, various herbal medicines, and just a whole bunch more. The report is completely free, so you have no reason to at least take a glance at it. And you can do that by simply clicking on the link right below this video that I made you right here. I really want to thank you so much for watching watching this video. I hope you learned a few things. Take care of yourself and have an awesome, great rest of your day.